Tired of spending $80 for one bottle of vitamin C serum? Today I'm going to show you how to make your own for pennies. Stay tuned. Welcome to Fleeting Beauty by Simply Kim. Today we have a special DIY. We are doing it ourselves. We are making a vitamin C serum. Here's everything that you'll need. You will need vitamin C powder. You'll need aloe vera gel. This is optional. If you want to make it with an extra vitamin, oil you can add vitamin e oil this is also optional you'll need sweet orange oil and that's really just for aroma you'll need two tablespoons of rose water mine happens to include glycerin one cobalt glass bottle you may use a brown bottle or anything that does not absorb light so please do not use clear bottles for the vitamin C serum and I can explain that later. You'll need a tablespoon and some sort of a container that has a spout on it. Um, that's just was what I used. Perhaps a funnel could work for you as well. So when you have all of those things, let's get started. So our very first ingredient is the star of the show. That is our vitamin C powder. Um, the most potent version of vitamin C powder that you can get is something that's called the L-ascorbic acid. It's the purest and the most potent. So please make sure that you get that type of vitamin C powder, read the label, make sure it's the right kind. Um, so vitamin C actually fights off damage to the skin that's caused from free radicals, which attack our collagen, the collagen production of, of our skin. Um, the collagen is responsible for keeping our skin very plump and, you know, the elasticity and keeping it moisturized. So when we lose collagen, uh, that's when we'll start to see the wrinkles and, you know, our skin will start to sag and... Some things just happen with age, but if we can reverse some of those things by adding uh, a product like vitamin C uh, serum to our skin to kind of reverse some of that, that damage, why not? So I am going in now with the aloe vera gel. You'll notice that I'm only putting in one tablespoon. Um, as I went back and looked at some of my research, it actually should have been two tablespoons two tablespoons of the gel and then also two tablespoons of what I'm adding next with which is the um, the rose water with glycerin so it's very important for me to note here that the vitamin C powder should only be 20% of your overall ingredients for example if you have five tablespoons there should only be one that is designated for the powder itself. And that's because it's so potent. You need a lot of ingredients mixed in with it to avoid damaging your skin. So as you can see, I'm adding in vitamin E oil. Some people do this, some people don't. Um, I'm doing it because I understand that there's a myth that vitamin C serum actually helps to correct hyperpigmentation. That actually is not true. That's actually false. Um, it's actually helping your skin uh, by protecting it from free radicals. Um, and as a result of that, you're getting that collagen, you're getting the elasticity, you're getting the moisture, but it's not actually doing anything to improve um, any dark you know, circles under the eyes or blemishes or that kind of thing or scars. So that's actually what vitamin E will do for you. And that's why I'm adding it to my serum today. And also I'll just note that glycerin is a wonderful thing for our skin as well. 
simply because it actually adds moisture to the skin um, just like the vitamin E does. So it's really a good thing to add to your skin. I know that black women who have natural hair, we avoid glycerin in our hair products uh, because it literally absorbs all the moisture in the air. And so our hair might be flat iron one second. And as soon as we hit moisture, like it goes poof, that's glycerin in a lot of the products that we use. So avoid that in your hair, but definitely add it to your skin. So this is also an option. I am adding in a few drops of my orange oil, and that is totally because I like the smell of oranges and we associate vitamin C with oranges. So I kind of wanted to have that experience when I apply my serum to my skin that I can get that nice fresh orangey scent. Totally optional. So I'm just stirring and stirring and making sure that everything's nice and smooth and blended together. Again, I will note that I had to go back in and do this recipe again to make sure that I did not overuse my powder. I do not want my skin damaged and I don't want your skin damaged. So remember to make sure that that powder is only 20% of your ingredients. So I'm just pouring in uh, my mixture into my bottle. I will make a um, special note here that you have to use a dark colored bottle. You do not want to use a clear bottle when working with vitamin C powder or any kind of vitamin C, simply because when you mix the powder with liquid, it automatically goes rancid as soon as the light hits it. So even when you're purchasing this at the store or Wherever you're getting it, you'll notice that the bottle is always dark or it's not um, clear. So make sure that you don't use a bottle that can actually have light get to your serum. Um, one way of knowing that your serum has gone bad is you'll start to see a very orangey, yellowy kind of crust starting to form around the opening of your container. That simply means that your serum is rancid it's gone bad it's oxidizing and you don't want to apply it to your skin I would advise you to throw it out right away and just make another batch so that completes everything um, I'm closing off my bottle because I'm done um, if I had included the actual measurements I probably would have had not just four ounces but I would have had even probably closer to like a bottle and a half so this should last you guys probably two weeks, three weeks, and all for about eight bucks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it, please subscribe. I'll be doing more DIY videos like this and other topics that I think are really important related to health and beauty. So we'll see you next time. Take care.